In this video, we're going to cover how nonprofit organizations use X2Vol. And we're going to talk about four things. The first is creating opportunities. And we're going to talk about verifying hours, communicating with volunteers, and then managing administrative users. Now, when you first log into your account, you're going to be taken to the dashboard page, which will just show you a summary of some of the information that's already in your account. To create a new opportunity, you're going to head up to the Opportunities tab up at the top. You're going to click there and you're going to be taken to a page that will be divided into two sections. The top section will say ongoing opportunities and the second section will be for scheduled opportunities. And you'll be able to create both. And you'll do that within the create a new opportunity page which we'll look at right now. So to create a new opportunity you will click on this green button here on the top right hand side that says create a new opportunity. Once there, you're going to need to fill out some information. Some of it is required, so I'll go ahead and identify which pieces of this need to be filled out. We're going to put in some test information here just so we can go through the process. So for opportunity name, that is a required field. For the description, I'm just going to put in a quick word here because that is a required field as well. You have the option of adding a section for instructions a section for restrictions. You can identify a minimum volunteer age which will filter the students who can actually sign up for the opportunity. So if you set this at 16 then there could be some high schoolers that may not be old enough to participate in your service opportunity. So that does reflect on the people who can view it. For interest this is something that's related to the type of service. So if you can identify which of these interests best relates to your service opportunity, you can select that. The next section is very important. You do have to select at least one contact for the opportunity and a maximum of two contacts. Now I'm going to select Julie Smith here as our contact. Once I do that, it's going to activate this next section and it says send email with verification link to the following contact. So this is a good way if you have somebody outside of your nonprofit organization that's going to be at the event, they will be able to verify these hours with an email that will be sent when the student logs those hours. So here if I click on this drop down, it shows Julie Smith is at contact. So now Julie Smith will be receiving those emails with the verification link. The last section here says location. You do have to select the location, of course, for your opportunity. And then I'm going to click proceed to scheduling. On this page, there's a few different things that can further filter what opportunities will be shown to what students. So this top section says who can view and participate in your opportunity. So by default, it will show to all organizations that are in the area. Now, there's one important thing I need to mention here before any schools that have X2Vol can show your opportunity to students, you have to be an approved organization at that school. So in other words, if you post an opportunity but there are no schools who use X2Vol in your area that have you approved as a nonprofit organization, then the students at those schools may not be able to see your opportunity. So it's a good idea to reach out to some of those schools that you have a relationship with and tell the school administrators to go into their administrative account and approve you as a nonprofit. Okay, so with that being said, you as a nonprofit organization can also filter what schools you want to show your opportunity to. And you can do that by clicking this radio button that says, Only my preferred organizations can participate in this opportunity. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do I select my preferred organizations? That can be done up here on the manager section and clicking on outgoing opportunities. There'll be a section there where you can select who your preferred organizations are. And then once that's selected, you can either pick one or multiple of those in this section. Next, we have an advanced feature here that will allow you to show the opportunity at a later date. So let's say you create the opportunity today, but you don't want to show it until a week from now. You can do that by clicking on this radio button and putting in a date where you want to actually show the opportunity to students. 
Okay, so this next section is probably the most important one because it determines what kind of opportunity you'll be posting. And as I said before, we have two different types, ongoing and a scheduled event. By far the most widely used is the scheduled event, but let me talk a little bit about the ongoing opportunity. This is used for a very open-ended, flexible opportunity to serve where let's say you have a period of time, it could be a month, it could be a year, so you would put that in the start and the end date. And as an example, you could say in the description, every Tuesday and Thursday, we need volunteers for XYZ. So you can't really control the number of volunteers. There's no specific time or shift associated with the event. It's just, again, an ongoing thing that anybody can sign up for at any time. A scheduled event, as we see here, has a lot more detail that can be associated with it. So you can put a specific day with a specific time, start time, end time, number of volunteers required, and you can create shifts like I've done here. There's already a shift here. If I wanted to add another shift, I could add another day, a different start time, and I could add, say I needed 10 volunteers for that shift, I would add that in there. So you can see they start listing here at the bottom. So you can add as many shifts to that scheduled event as you need. And when the students are signing up for it, once those slots are filled up, they won't be able to sign up unless somebody leaves or somebody cancels that sign up. Okay, so that pretty much covers the opportunity creation. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And we're going to see that on the opportunities page, that opportunity has been created. This is it and the two shifts that we created are here as well. Okay, so let's spend now some time looking at how to verify hours as a nonprofit. Now, it's important to note that there are two ways that you can verify hours as a nonprofit organization. The first way can be done here within your administrative system, and that is for opportunities that you have posted as a nonprofit. When students sign up for those and then perform the service, they will go into their account and log their hours against that opportunity. Those hours that are logged against an opportunity that you, the nonprofit, have posted will appear here in your manager section under the tab that says pending hours. So if you click there, you're going to see any hours that a student has submitted against an opportunity that you've posted in the system. Now, it's important to note that there is another way that you can verify hours, and that is through email. At any time, the student can submit what we call a manual entry and then enter in the contact information, which could be somebody from your nonprofit organization and their email. And then that verification link is sent to that email that they put in the entry. So those hours would not show up here in your administrative system. Those would come directly to your email. So again, any hours that appear here are hours that are logged against opportunities that have been posted by you, the nonprofit. So just keep in mind that even though you've posted opportunities in the system, a student may still just enter in a manual entry and instead of seeing their hours appear here in this section, you will just get an email with a verification link. And there are nonprofits that do not register with X2Vol that just receive emails for verification. They do not have an administrative account like you see here. That's just something to note. Okay, so now that we've covered creating opportunities and verifying hours, I'd like to spend a few moments talking about how to communicate with the volunteers. So I'm gonna to go to my opportunity section and what you'll notice on each of these scheduled opportunities is a button that says email list. Now if I click on that, it's going to email all of the shifts in that specific event. So if you want to just target certain shifts, so let's say one of these shifts got canceled and you say, well, I don't really want to email everybody in this opportunity, I just want to email those students that are in a specific shift, what you would do instead is click on the little email icon next to that specific shift. So again, there's really two ways to email. One, 
this big button which will email everybody in the opportunity or the smaller icon on the left hand side for individual shifts. Now looking at the email itself there are a few fields here that you can change and a few things to keep in mind. Now there are some bits of information scattered throughout this form here but it's important to note that any replies to the email that you send will be sent to the email that you use to sign into your account. So for example, this one here is the email that I use to log in to my administrative account. You cannot change that. However, there's a note here that says if you would prefer to be contacted by alternate means, please feel free to include instructions in the email message. So here, if you want the response to be sent somewhere else, you can tell the volunteers to send the response to whatever email address that you like. So the subject line is of course editable. We have something in here as a default, but you can change that. And of course, to send the message, you would just press this blue button here at the bottom. So the last thing I wanna cover here on the nonprofit administrative side is managing your users. So these are users that will actually be creating opportunities inside of the system and verifying hours and potentially adding other users. So I'm on the dashboard. I'm going to go up to the manager section and click on user management. Now in this section, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see a section for staff users, opportunity contacts and opportunity locations. So the one we're going to look at right now is the staff users. And if I click on this double arrow, I'm going to see that there are actually there's only just one user in this particular account. So we could edit that to change the privileges. There are two different roles that you can be in the nonprofit administrative side. One is the administrator and another is what we call a project manager. And you can see the differences in those two roles if you click on create new user. So I'm going to do that right now. You'll get a pop up and you'll see a little explanation here on the user roles. I'm not going to get into that right now. But one thing that I will mention is that to create a new user, you do have to select a role and make sure when you're putting in the email to get that correct, because that is how that new user will receive their credentials to log into the account. So if this is wrong for whatever reason, if there's a typo, they will not receive the email and they will not be able to log in. So that covers the general overview of how a nonprofit can use X2Vol to create opportunities, to verify hours, and to manage their administrative side. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to our email or the phone number that you see here on the screen. Thanks for watching.